what drives me from bed this morning is one line to replace another in a month old poem. I rise, adjust myself in jockey shorts, stumble down hallway, pee and splash face in the mirror, crank up the coffee, the computer, and swallow pills for my heart, read over the dream material from last night, then click the reply to program updates to remind me later, and write till noon or sometimes one, followed by stretching, sitting, prayer, a bite to eat. Afterwards, answer calls and go down the emergency stairs to the street and ride my bike to Margot's for contact with a female human being. By late afternoon, I'll be back upstairs, shit if I'm lucky, and eat something. Take a shower, perhaps. In the evening, I'll listen to a ball game, read newspapers, and decide finally to go back to that poem in question and install the original line yeah. back in its place. Yeah. 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 Uh, this is uh, the barking dog theory and its relation to demons. I guess I dozed off and awoke with blinds beating and wind zooming in the halls. A perfect square on the wall from the lights in the park, almost forgetting where I was and suddenly I'm a boy back home. With all the voices inside crowding to be heard, I could smell rain but knew it hadn't started by the traffic sounds. Flora next door screeching, I can't remember, I can't remember, leave me alone. And cackling with lightning, further proof of the barking dog theory of literature, I said, aiming our attention at a dog's anus and flexing. It is for pleasure the dogs bark at nothing in sight. The same reason we stay up at night reading in silence the uvula lapping in spasms with our anus. While I walk room to room pulling strings in walls to alert the world of my heart attack or fall, it's in the contract. What is it about you that keeps me from being what I want? Altered by signs, alerted by signs, I watch a parade with opera glasses and make out faces. A marching band, a car with the name of a bar I once drank in, gone, then nothing. But the next morning in November, and the newspaper machines, all frozen. How I got this way. <laughs> Last night I talked about my brief career as a writer for money. When I wrote my first book and found an agent who suggested changes. And I made them. Before she found a New York publisher whose editor suggested further changes. Which I made. As I was respectful of agents and editors as much as writers who'd gone before. Before, that is, it came to discussing my next book. When they began to betray me in very small ways before screwing me. In the end, saying I was the best writer they'd ever had the pleasure of knowing goodbye. <laughs> and something snapped inside me, marking the end of my career as a novelist. You see... I had always wanted to be more than anything a successful writer, so much that it blinded me to the poetry of others with their hands cracked and rough hopes for their children. No respect for carpenters, plumbers, and men who fix things. You see, ambition closed me to anything else but writing. It kept me from becoming a man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.